Question four. Get a little more volume. Yes on four. Legalize marijuana in Massachusetts. Yes on four. Legalize marijuana in Massachusetts. My name is Joseph Gilmore. I'm a senior in economics here at UMass Boston. Yes, tell them. I'm the founder and the president of Students for Sensible Drug Policy here at UMass Boston. And our goal is to raise awareness about the impact that the war on drugs is having on our society. Yes, on four, end the drug war. The war on drugs is counterproductive and it's not making our society any better. No, no, stupid. So we all came here together. We're all different people from different walks of life. We're patients, we're students. We're, we have cancer survivors here. We have veterans here. We have people of color here. We're all coming together for a common issue. We need to end marijuana prohibition. And it starts with legalizing marijuana by ending the drug war. Stop incarceration! We need to end mass incarceration. Instead of incarcerating people, we can be growing the economy. We can create millions of jobs with this cannabis industry. Do it. Here we go. $50 billion. So we got a lot of good speakers here for you today to listen to, some take-home information. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to, to Kamani here in a minute. I want to make sure everybody is registered to vote. We're registering voters right here. Voters right here. Yes, all and if I can, just get you to lead you off in a chant. Register to vote, guys. I'm gonna, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to say it first, and I'm going to let you repeat it. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so it goes like this. Yes on four, end the drug war. 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 Legalize marijuana, people. Next, I'm going to bring up Kamani Jefferson from Cannabis Culture Association. Yo! Woo. UMass Boston, what is good? My name is Kamani Jefferson. I'm a blacktivist by heart. <laughs> and I co-founded a group with a bunch of awesome people back in New York called the Cannabis Cultural Association. We are cannabis culture. And currently, brown, Latino people of America are four times likely to be arrested. Blacks like myself, or seven times more likely to be arrested. And that's just for possession. If you're intent to sell, it's up to 10 times. I know friends who've been arrested, who have a record, who can't go to school, who can't get financial aid, who can't get a job, because it's a war on drugs. The war on drugs is a war on us, a war on black and brown people. So I started a group to encourage diversity of all, all life from disability, to veterans, to women, to people of color. They all deserve to be a part of this industry. So yes, on four, end the drug war. Yes, on four, end the drug war. Yes, on four, end the drug war. Thank you so much. I'm gonna bring up Joe. Joe actually was convicted as a student and went through a lot of shit. So Joe, take over. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Shinafanti, and I, uh, I'm a student here at UMass Boston now, and I couldn't be any happier. I'm here today to uh, share my story with you about my conviction of a felony marijuana conviction. All right, so a little preface of myself. I used to attend school in North Carolina at Elon University, where I majored in finance and had a high academic standing in the business school. However, during the spring of 2015, in the fraternity house, which I lived in, I was arrested due to my room being searched, and they found over an ounce of pot. Living in a fraternity house, there were complaints to another person's room. The cops unlawfully searched my room, and I ended up being charged. I made these decisions at 20 years old, 
Man, I'm in there suffering the repercussions for approximately 15 years with a felony charge. These were non-violent decisions that were absolutely harmless because after all, we're talking about marijuana. A drug that has in fact never killed someone from the direct use, unlike the cigarettes that we buy from the stores today. Ten dollars a pack! Ten dollars a pack. After being arrested and charged four months later, I was found guilty with a felony charge for possession of pot. A felony which is now going to inhibit my future ability to work under finance. Finance was my major, and it was three years of schooling that I had at an expensive school, private school down south. Now that I can no longer work in that for 15 years of my life, I had to redirect my course. Upon hearing this, I understood I needed to appeal this, so I would have wasted three years of school. However, upon the appeal, they said no, not for 15 years, because it's too soon afterwards. On top of that, I was suspended from my university for a year and a half, which would mean that not only would I this semester I have been working toward knockout, but I missed my senior year at Elon University with the kids I had met and become close friends with. On top of that, during the summer, I had received a letter from someone down south with my face circled and my name on it, with my conviction statement, saying to mom or dad. Felt very embarrassed and ashamed of that. Put me in a hole for quite some time. With all these different things going on, not being able to work in my financial internship anymore, not being able to study finance, not being with my friends, I was truly at all time depressed and low. I took great shame in this and I wanted to fight back. So I ended up applying to new schools and not letting it stop me. And now I am honored and privileged to now attend UMass Boston where I am studying economics and plan to use that with my entrepreneurship ability. Yeah, Joe. This is just my story that I'm happy to share with you, but I know there are many others who suffer consequences like myself. All in all, the legalization of pot needs to occur to stop punishing people for a harmless crime and preventing them from getting jobs. It needs to happen to stop the incarceration of people. We can make money collectively as a state and nation off of this business if people remove the false negative stigma around it. Yes, on four. Thank you very much. Yeah! Let's give it up for Joe C. Yeah, Joe. That was nice. All right, next I'm going to introduce the campaign manager for Yes on Four. His name is Will Luzier. Yeah! And thank you all for coming. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. Tell them, Will. Uh, in 1970, I was a student activist. I was a hippie. Yeah. Uh, and... And right around that time, the Nixon administration was uh, changing the marijuana laws in order to target hippies. Uh, they, they said, did we know we were lying about that drug? Of course we did. But they made it a Schedule One drug. Well, in the meantime, in 1970 in January, I got arrested for possession of less than a quarter of an ounce of marijuana, which was a, then, at the time, a Class A misdemeanor in, in New York State. The cops put their hand in my pocket in order to get that marijuana. It was in a little film canister. I don't know. I, I know most of you don't remember what a film canister looks like. Um, so it was in a little film canister, and fortunately, I got a lawyer. Uh, the case was thrown out. But bottom line was, my life would have been severely altered if I uh, if I had had that conviction on my record. Uh, I went to law school. I'm a lawyer by trade, uh, and this job has allowed me to meld my legal and political experience with my passion for marijuana law reform. So the, the question that's on the ballot in November, November 8th, remember that date, you need to all go and vote on November 8th, but also remember October 19th, because if you're not registered to vote, October 19th is a crucial day. You need to be registered before October 19th in order to vote on November, November 8th. So I don't care who you vote for for president. I don't care what you do with those other Very players. nice. But you need Thank to make you. sure that you vote yes on four. Thank yes. you. Yeah! Let's give it up for Will Zier from the campaign, oh yes on four, and the drug war. Love Will. Talk to him all the time. Good guy. Next, we're going to bring up the New England Veterans Alliance to bring a veteran's perspective. What was it? Small announcement, hold on. But, uh, but, oh. Yes on four, end the drug war! Yes on four, end the drug war! Yes on four, end the drug war! Alright, so I've got, um, I've got a stack of um, voter registration forms. I've got one in Spanish, I've got one in English, just one, because I've already been passing them out quite a bit. Uh, but I, I don't know if anyone here is a Chinese-speaking student. I've got a ton of those. 
Um, so uh, just so you know, that's, that's what you can do to register right now and do yes on four. Yes on four. Yes on four. Woo! If I can ask everybody to just crowd around a little bit, just get a little closer. Get a little closer so we, we're all in one little circle. <laughs> Alright, next, next up we got New England Veterans Alliance. Yeah! Yeah! How's it going? Yes, let's do it. So uh, I'm speaking on the uh, veterans perspective. Uh, uh, I'm an Afghanistan veteran. I served in the Army for seven years. Yeah! yeah. Thank you! I was a member of the uh, 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, second of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and uh, was deployed to southeastern Afghanistan. Saw everything that uh, you would expect a typical soldier to see: uh, firefights, uh, been in an IED attack, uh, long patrols. Uh, also, lots of jumps. I mean, the military service just uh, produces a lot of wear and tear on the body. Uh, soldiers get concussions. They suffer from PTSD. Um, even if they don't get deployed, uh, you know, there's high prevalence of assault in the military, and uh, I think uh, medical cannabis is a very useful tool as far as recovery and, uh, you know, regaining a sense of self and civilian life. Yeah. And uh, I also went to UMass Amherst instead of UMass Boston. UMass! UMass! Yeah. 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 And I uh, majored in kinesiology, um, mainly be because uh, exercise is very important and uh, holistic health. Things like yoga, meditation, and uh, medical cannabis is a part of that. And it's also uh, nutritional. It's a, uh, you know, it can replace a lot of drugs. You know, uh, opiates, uh, fentanyl. It's a huge problem in Massachusetts. And uh, that was about the opioid crisis. What is the opioid crisis? Just uh, very prevalent, and I can talk about that personally because uh, a family member of mine overdosed on uh, hydrocodone. And uh, I had to call 911, and that just validated, uh, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. So uh, we're uh, doing a lot of great things with our organization. We have uh, meetings once a month in Wakefield, Rhode Island. It's a medical cannabis-friendly club called the Tetra Hydro Club. Uh, we believe strongly in fellowship, bringing people together, helping veterans uh, escape that isolation that is very prevalent on campus, and. Uh, you know, we also help veterans get access to medical marijuana and the legal means uh, within their respective state, whether it be Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, really opening up the access. We're all about access, so we're definitely pro-legalization. So yes on four, all the way. Yeah! And it's all about uh, opening up uh, new areas of research, too. Uh, we're working with the Harvard Mind Program, and uh, we're looking for a significant number of veterans to uh, basically, you know, do a research trial on whether medical cannabis is effective for, you know, treating their symptoms. So be on the lookout on social media for, uh, you know, advertising, looking for subjects. What's your Facebook page? Uh, Facebook, you can find us, uh, New England Veterans Alliance on Facebook or Instagram. And we also have a website that links you to those social media accounts. And our co-founders are, uh, Derek Clodier and uh, Sean Judge. Awesome, I'm ready. Just want to thank everybody for coming out and uh, supporting Yes on Four. Let's give it up for David, New England Veterans Alliance. All right, next up we got a good friend of mine named Ellen Brown. He's an inspiration. You guys need to listen up. Thank you very much, UMass Boston! All right, so we have some changes coming to our state. We could be the first state in New England to legalize marijuana. Don't you want that? A new industry here? We're all coming out of college and we're wondering, well, what's next? Well, why not cannabis? We're seeing success in Colorado, we're seeing success in Washington, and I want that here. It doesn't matter your age, your race, your creed. Cannabis loves everyone. Hemp loves everyone. And that's why we have to vote yes on four. And thank you to Students for Sensible Drug Policy because that's what we're asking for. Sensible reform. Cannabis should have never been illegal in the first place. 
And now, 2016, we're going to set it right in Massachusetts, and eventually, we're going to get it descheduled. And it's not going to happen without every single one of us getting involved, getting active, talking to each other. They created this stage here in the middle of a campus. That's something you could do. If you don't want to get up on a stage, can't you share it on social media? Talk about it around the dinner table, talk to your friends. It's amazing that some people don't even know that this is on the ballot initiative this year. This is our year! Everyone should know! Yes on four! I will see you November 8th when we vote yes on four, and I will see you when we get it descheduled. Thank you, UMass Boston! Yes! Shout out to Ellen. Hey! She's a vet! She's a vet too! Shout out to the vets! Shout out, shout out to you, Mass Boston. Shout out to New England Veteran Alliance and shout out to the vets. Our next speaker is Alex Mendes. He's running for Senate and he's pro marijuana. So shout out to Alex. Bring it up for Alex. Hey everyone, registered to vote. No. <laughs> uh, where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, I'm Al Mendez, I'm running for state senate. My district is actually south of here from Quincy and Little First at the south. So I hope that if you're from Quincy, tell your friends. But uh, I was invited by Joe, he said come on down, tell him about it, so that's what I'm here for. If you use cannabis, if you don't use cannabis, it's an issue that affects everybody, however you want to look at it. It's criminal justice. Criminal justice means human rights, and that means public tax dollars. So however you guys want to reform it, do it your way. But right now, we have an amazing opportunity to question forward, to push public policy forward, and it's our time. But besides that, go out. If you use cannabis, if you don't use cannabis, attack the political establishment right now. Yeah! Right now, yeah. Woo! They say that cannabis is the number one worst threat in the United States. It's a Schedule One drug, which is absolute BS. I bullshit. Wish I could... bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Exactly. Call it how it is. One drugs is bullshit. So we have to perpetuate that idea and say, guys, we have to change the way we address it. Because right now, the pharmaceutical industry is controlling bullshit. the drug. It's bullshit too. They're controlling the dialogue of drug culture. That's why if your friend's addicted to drugs, addicted to opiates, they're going to take them off, put them in treatment, they're going to put them on Suboxone, Nylon, uh, and any type of drug to keep him paying the pharmaceutical bills right now. But like someone always says, Uma, she always says, cannabis is a drug, not an entry drug. Buy any, any I means, love Dr. Uma. It's not a gateway drug. I use cannabis all the time, but I haven't had any of what is it? Instinct. Exactly. Maybe it's sticks to use hair anyways. I'm not sticking to my arm. Get high all the time. There's a big difference between a weed, gummy bear, and a needle. And for some reason, yeah. public, some reason public uh, policy makers can't make that distinction. So right now I'm gonna pass around the sign-up sheet. So if you guys want to get involved, that is far for your where you can hold a sign like this. And if you want, you can hold a sign for me that says, we're the next generation, we're moving in. Yeah. We're going to bring a fresh perspective for a better future. Because right now, the people in charge are holding us back way more than we should be pushing forward. Yeah. Right? yeah. All, right. All right. So I'm going to have a sign-up sheet. Sign up. Tell your friends. Let's fucking kick ass. Let's fucking kick ass. All right. All right. So that's enough. If you have any questions, I'm going to be sitting right here. So let's fucking do it. All right? So yeah. Alright, next we got a student from awesome. Boston. Her name is Gabriella Cartagena. Yeah! She's gonna talk about marijuana legalization in public education. So let's give it up for her. Hey guys, my name is Gabriella. Um, this past summer, I actually got the opportunity to work with Michelle Wu, who is the first woman of color to be the president of the city council. She knew nothing about marijuana except for how it smelled, you know, you know, because she went to tall out of the dorms. And I let her know about the injustices, the racial injustices, yes. and the potential benefits that this tax, taxation, regulation, and legislation of marijuana can have. So I kind of connected question four with question two and all the downsides that come with that Dang. and integrated with environmental benefits healthcare benefits, mental illness benefits, along with substance abuse uh, benefits, since we all know that mental abuse 
feeds into substance abuse and vice versa. And yeah, guys, like vote yes for four. Yes for four. And I really hope you guys know why marijuana, marijuana became illegal yeah. in the first place. I know Will here was saying that it was targeted to take away the hippies, you know, fight against that. But it actually started after the Mexican Revolution back in the early 1900s. In the U.S., marijuana was considered cannabis. It was, it was used medicinally for centuries here and abroad. And when Mexicans started infiltrating the United States more now that after, after the Mexican Revolution, that's when the U.S. used marijuana as a target to demonize the, the word marijuana along with Mexicans, you know? Like, now what is it called? It's cannabis. It's, cannabis. Cannabis. it's back to cannabis. Like, what's up with that? You know, it's, it says something there in itself. And I really hope you guys register by October 19th to vote. Yeah. Voices. We are the millennials. We are the majority. Yes, it was the baby boomers. Baby boomers have larger voter registrations. We are the majority. Yet, where where are our voices? Where are our voices, guys? How long will it take, guys? When's the next election? Four years. Four years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Let's do this now. Let's act today. Let's do stuff now. Student activism, youth activism. We need more of you guys up here doing this with us. So, yeah, vote yes, number four. Yeah! Pass the mic on. Thanks a lot, Gabby. Awesome, thank you Gabby. Next up, we're about to bring up Black Lives Matter, Cambridge. And Black Lives Matter is very important to this. There's a huge racial justice opportunity to legalize cannabis. So we're very excited. Let's do it. Hey y'all, what's going on? So my name is Didi Delgado, I'm just a regular person. Please don't let them introduce me like that, right? Um, I was just here. Uh, for the William Joyner Institute, so I really have a good affinity to the school, and I'm really happy to be here. So, about yes on four. Hmm. All right, so here we go. So, weed is not just something that you do when you're trying to have fun. A lot of people have many uses for weed. We don't even need to get into them because studies have shown time and time again that we use for medicinal purposes, uh, we use for therapeutic purposes, is all in all a good thing for everybody. What I'm here to talk to y'all about today though is the racial disparities for folks of color, no matter if you are black, Latinx, Asian, or uh, even an Arab speaking person. It seems like in Massachusetts, the number of arrests for people of color, even though it's um, not as criminalized here. You should be getting a ticket if you have an ounce or less, right? But it seems like they're using that as, uh, they like to say, an entry way, right? That marijuana is an entry way drug. No, it's, it's allowing people of color to get entered into the system. So why are you getting pulled over for a traffic infraction? There was a lawyer in Newton in 2012. She was actually, even though she's trying to educate them on the law, they're still processing her, and, and they've arrested her, and she's like, weigh it, it's 14 grams. It's like a joint. <laughs> you know, and she was about to get processed grams. and booked and go on her record for possession of marijuana. And it was because she was black, because I lived in Newton, and I lived in Watertown, and many of y'all know I live in Cambridge. Woo! And people in Cambridge, people in North Cambridge, are not getting arrested, but if there's an uptick in crime and weed is involved, guess where they're going? Straight to the hood. And why is that? It's because continuously, 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 they use marijuana as the gateway entrance to the war on drugs. And I'm here to tell y'all and ask y'all and plead with y'all, y'all are the youth. It's not up to me no more. I'm gonna vote yes on four, but this, this affects you. This affects your peers. How are you going to let people who are not of color decide for you what's the best thing for you to do? Yeah. So I really encourage you to go out there and vote in the first place because we don't need uh, an America that looks like it's been looking like for the past 16, the past 20, 
the past 32 years, right? So, like, let's make this country great again by putting black people, brown people at the forefront, and we can all smoke weed. I see equality on that ballot question all day. So thank you very much. If y'all want to find out more information about Black Lives Matter, about the policies we are holding, and yes, I agree with you. Uh, vote no one too, that shit's bullshit. Fix yeah. some problems first, right? Yeah. Like, don't try to implement new measures to fix um, problems. Um, if you want to find out more information, you can find us on Facebook or Black Lives Matter Cambridge. Um, we do work with Boston. They're going through a transition period if anybody wanted to know how to get in contact with them. Um, you can just inbox us on Facebook if you want to volunteer or do anything with us, and we'd be happy to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's give it up for Black Lives Matter. Woo! All right, next up we got KP Owens. Yeah! She is, yeah. She's a longtime activist. She's been in this fight for a long time. She's also a breast cancer survivor. There you go. Okay, kids, listen. I'm 70, as of Tuesday. You're young. Okay? Growth, cannabis, woo my hair because I had cancer five years ago in my right breast. I woke up, there was the lump. I said, oh my God, what's going on? And what did I do? I looked, I said, okay, you got cancer. You're gonna get through it, don't worry about it. So I did. I found on my way to school in Mount Pelia in Vermont, on my way, I was talking to my co-partner and I said, I gotta find some organic pot. My partner said, don't worry about it, my dad's Grows it for breast cancer women only. So I lucked in. For three years, I traveled back and forth from Boston to Vermont to get my pot, and I lived there. But I just got my medical marijuana license here in Massachusetts six weeks ago. I've only been to the dispensary one. I'm not crazy about their dispensaries. I don't like what they got there. I know that the pot I've bought and I've gotten in other places is a lot better. So I'm not too crazy about the dispensaries. But we only got seven or six Eight. out of 15. After Eight? two years. Right. So, no, it's 2012 we've been trying to get them in. Four years. So listen, it's really important that you kids, and I'm calling you kids because that's what you are, <laughs> do what you think is right. But FOA is right. Yeah. If you want to be able to smoke a joint in your home and not feel wrong, then you can do that without a license. I can't smoke out on the street, but I can smoke at home as long as I got my license, right? So that's why we need you to help us get that vote through because FOA is the only way we're going to open that door. Now, we're here to empower you, embrace you, and educate you. We don't want you to walk away saying, oh, those people don't know what the hell they're talking about. We do know what we're talking about. That's why we are here. That's why we show up at every rally. That's why we show up when we're supposed to. We're trying to teach and educate the people, Charlie and what's that other guy's name? Jimmy Walsh, the mayor and the governor? Marty Walsh. Charlie and Baker. Marty Walsh. No Walsh good. So we're trying to educate them because they consume alcohol. Sober, 48 years. I can't drink booze and smoke a joint. No way. Do not drive when you're smoking. Please don't. Get an Uber. I'm an Uber driver. <laughs> yeah! So, Uber everywhere. I don't smoke until I go to bed at night. That's the only time I smoke now. Before, when I was getting chemo, I puff puff. Before I went in and they, they gave me that drug. I lost my hair, yeah. But kids... We need you because you are the upcoming people. And you need the education we're trying to give to you. So please listen to what we're asking you to do. It's not rocket science. You go to vote, you register here, or you register in your neighborhood, and you go in, you vote, you look at number four, and you go, yes, I want yeah. it. And on number two, you say no. 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 All right. So that's right. You say no on number two and yes on number four on November 8th. And that's what we'd like you to do. And pass it on to all your friends. 
please tell your home. Hey, hey, Mr. Parker. Make sure that you all know that we are here for you. We're not against you. I went to school with him to learn about smoking, growing, educating, and he asked me to come here, and that's why I'm here. My kids think, okay, you can do what you want to do. And I want to say one thing. It takes 15 seconds for a heroin addict to become a heroin addict. Yeah. It takes 15 years to clean that person and millions of dollars. Wow. They die before they get 15 years in. So if you want to do something, you want to hand a joint to somebody instead of a needle yes. or an opium, Freeze. do it. So we're going to free the weed. We're going to vote. Free, free the weed. Vote two, free. no. And we're going to make it work this year. Thank you for showing up and coming. KP Owen! I love you! That was awesome. That was awesome. If you guys aren't registered to vote, you have it right here. October right 19th there, is the deadline, register. so please register to vote. Yes, on four. End the drug war. Next we have Anne, who's a medical marijuana patient. She also has suffers from a brain tumor, so marijuana has been very helpful. Thank you so much, Anne. Hey. Coming to the stage. say that marijuana has not just shown promise in breast cancer or other cancers, it has also shown astounding promise in the treatment of epilepsy. If you guys don't know what epilepsy is, it's a, it's a neurological condition that causes you to fall down and shake. Uh, sometimes that's called a grand mal seizure. Sometimes people have partial seizures or acid seizures. They just pass out. They, they, they lose consciousness. I can't drive. I'm not allowed to drive. I could almost drive. I was seizure free for about five and a half months, and then I had a seizure two days ago. So um, let's see, so three million Americans have epilepsy, also called the seizure disorder. So one third of us have what's called intractable epilepsy. This means that our seizures just don't go away. 